this is not a tutorial. Skydiving has always been very high on my bucket list, as I'm sure for most people. In my last video, Andreas and I did our first tandem jump, and uh, we competed in having the lowest heart rate. But uh, to get the real skydiving experience, I decided to sign up for the AFF course, a course you need to take if you want to jump on your own. So I drove Andreas to the train station and returned to camp the same evening. I really wanted to finish the course before the annual Hercules jump, which is a cooperation between the Norwegian Army and the Skydiving Club. But unfortunately I got started a little bit too late and I had to watch the event from the ground. Another event that I sadly had to watch from the ground was the beach jump, followed by the beach party. I really wish that I could show some footage from the party, but uh, YouTube would probably age restrict or maybe even take down my video. And of course I don't want that. In many ways the skydiving community reminds me of how the climbing community used to feel like, before it became more mainstream. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about my experience with the AFF course, and we will start at the beginning. This is level 1. Even though you're not attached to anyone and you have your own parachute, you jump out of the plane with two instructors. Before jumping out of the plane, you need to do what's called the hotel check. You check in with your first instructor sitting inside the airplane before checking out with your second instructor sitting outside the airplane. You then proceed to look at the wing. You go out, in, and jump. As soon as you're stable, you watch the ground before checking the altitude. Then you look at your secondary instructor on your left side, who might or might not give you instructions via sign language that you've learned on the ground. As soon as you get an okay from him or her, you look at your primary instructor. And if you also get a thumbs up from your primary instructor, you pretend to pull the chute three times. If you fail to do any of this, you have to redo the jump. Then you check the ground and the altitude again, and from 6,000 feet you lock on, meaning you don't take your eyes off the altimeter. On 5,500 you do what's called a wave off, to signal that you're about to pull the chute, and then you pull the chute. After you pull your chute, you count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and you check if you fly or not. If you don't fly, you need to perform a backup procedure, but uh, hopefully that won't happen to me. So there are a lot of things to remember, and uh, I feel like that makes you almost less nervous before you jump. Or less nervous about the jump, more nervous about messing up what you've practiced. So here is my first jump. After pulling the chute, you want to get to the waiting area. And you want to leave the waiting area at 900 feet. And you make another turn at 600 and 300 feet. But if the T on the ground was turned the other way, the landing would be opposite as well. And you also need to take the wind into consideration. So the landing can be quite tricky, but I never really had any trouble with it. 
After each jump, you sit down and you evaluate the jump with your instructors. Even though I passed level 1, there were still things that I could improve for my next jump. Like when I was pretending to pull a shoot, I should have reached all the way back, like touching the ball. You can see my instructor tried to help me there. And also when actually pulling the shoot, I need to be more stable. You can see I was really wobbly there. I also cleared level 2 on my first try, but level 2 is really similar to level 1, so I'm gonna skip to level 3. And on this level, you should really find the balance yourself, and fly without the help of your instructors. Here is my level 3 jump. The only pointers I got from this jump was to straighten my legs more and to do a slower wave off. Next day I finished level 4 and 5 as well. I'm gonna skip that though and jump straight to level 6. And this is definitely where things become more interesting. You jump out of the plane with one instructor, but the instructor doesn't help you in any way. On this jump you need to do a backflip. I guess many of you have seen me try to do a backflip before. Okay. Damn. But the point of this backflip is just to make you unstable. So that you can show that you can become stable again. You're also supposed to practice something called marching. Or there might be a different word for it in English, I don't know. But that's what it's called in Norwegian at least. That's basically just flying forward. And to do that you need to straighten your legs and move your hands down to your hips. The backflip went surprisingly well actually. It didn't make me too unstable, but uh, jumping out of the airplane on the other hand, that made me really unstable because I forgot to look out at the wing. And uh, also my legs should have been a little bit more straight on the marching. So the next level is level 7, and this is the last level where you fly with an instructor in the air. So on this level you do a front flip instead of a back flip. And uh, I also had to show that I was able to march better than on my last jump to clear this level. With that jump I cleared level 7 and now I'm on level 8. 
and to clear level 8 you need to do a certain amount of jumps on your own, without any instructors. But that was also the end of this video of my skydiving experience. I will be back with more climbing content pretty soon. I know it's been a while, but I really want to thank Oslo Skydiving Club for this experience. If you're in the area and you want to jump, you should definitely check them out. Links will be in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already. Leave a comment. That's always nice. And uh, I will see you in the next video.